Five years ago, as our oldest son was driving in for a school event, he was killed in a car accident. He was 16. I worked nights at that time, and so I was actually put on call that night, which means that I didn't go into work. We were in the midst of potty training our two-year-old, and so he was running around the house, and Blake, instead of having to babysit then, he was able to go into town um, for the school event. I gave him a hug, I told him to be careful, and he headed out the door. I had parent-teacher conferences at the high school that night, and was actually with, with some parents of another student when I got a phone call uh, from Hallie, her daughter. She was really upset, said Blake had been in an accident. And I, I tried to comfort her, said, you know, it's okay, it's fine. It's, it'll be okay, I'll get there as soon as I can, mom will be there, you know, we'll, it'll be fine. And really thought, just a fender bender. And then our, our school secretary showed up at my classroom door and, and said, Wade, uh, I need to talk to you a minute. I don't know, the look on her face, I knew, I knew something was worse than what I thought it was. Uh, she told me that Blake had been in an accident. It was fairly serious and I needed to leave. Uh, so I got back on the phone and was going to meet them at the hospital because I was told that's where they'd be headed. Um, on my way to the hospital, I actually saw the ambulance heading out. So I turned, around, uh, turned and followed it. Um, and that's where, I guess that's where our life's changed. Our neighbor had come upon the accident. He was headed home, so in the opposite direction of Blake. Um, and his wife had come and knocked on the door and said, you know, Blake's in an accident. So she drove me there. And I didn't even know that the weather was bad that mm -hmm. night. But immediately when we pulled onto the highway, you know, it was slick. And that was when I knew that it wasn't good. I don't know why, how I knew that, but... I just knew that that it was really bad. Um, as a mom, you want to see everything that's happening um, with your kid, and that's the worst thing that I could have done. Um, there was a line of cars that stopped traffic, so I just pulled off to the side and got out and started running down the road because it was, I mean, it was it was just a scene of, of something you knew was bad. All the lights and the the car stopped and you know flares on the road and all that kind of stuff it seemed like and the first thing I saw was his car and I knew I just knew I, I, I knew when I saw his car I, I knew Then they took us to the hospital, and um, to this day, walking by the family waiting room, and this, everything just comes flooding back. Um, having to tell, you know, his grandparents, but you know, I guess worst of all, having to tell his siblings. That was one of the hardest yeah. things. Was just where do I, where do I get the strength to tell the people that loved him this? It was just hard. after that was a fog. There's just a black rim or, or around your vision. You don't notice things. You don't pay attention to stuff. People talking to you and 10 minutes later, you can't remember what they said or you don't know what you said or. And then all the while you're trying to help your kids cope through it. You know, you're trying to help them just try, try to grasp that life is completely changed forever for them. And, you know, how do you wade through that? It was dark. It was really, really dark for a lot of the time. Heaven had given us a book um, shortly after Blake died called A Grace Disguised. Um, and in that book, he, the author talks about when you go through a loss, um, you know, loss of a child, a sibling, a divorce, illness, loss a of a job, you know, whatever your loss is, your, your soul is elastic. So 
it expands so you're able to experience that deep, dark sadness. But on the other end of that, you're also able to feel joy so much more. And this, the same author talks about trying to stay in the sun. The sunset's coming, nighttime's falling, and, and you're running as fast as you can to stay in the light. You don't want that darkness to overcome you, but no matter how fast you run, you, you can't escape it. That darkness always comes. The quickest way out of the darkness isn't to try to outrun it, to stay in front of it. The quickest way is to turn around, face it, and run as hard as you can right into it. And that was a big turning point for me, um, was, was coming to that realization that, you know what, I, I don't, I'm not gonna stay in the darkness, I don't need to stay here. I need to turn and I need to go to that light. And that, that light was Jesus. Right. That light was, was him reaching out to us and saying, the only way to get through this is to come to me. We, we are not strong enough for anything like this. I don't think anybody's strong enough to handle anything like this on their own. No. Um, he is, you know? Well, and, you know, a lot of times you read, you know, God won't give you more than what you can handle. And he, yeah, he's gonna give you more than you can handle because you're gonna need to lean on him. Yeah, he's not gonna leave you, know? you there though. Right. He's, it's not like I'm gonna give you this to handle and then you're on your own. I'm gonna give us this to handle. Exactly. Yeah. But he's going to carry you through it, and yeah. he's going to hold your heart every step of the way. If you will let Jesus be your life, if you, if you can give everything over to him, and that's hard to do. I mean, you, when you experience something like that, you want to blame him. You want to say, you know, how can you let this happen? Like, what, what, what happened? Why? Why me? Why us? Why our son? Why my job? Why my marriage? Why whatever? How, how could you do this to me? Um, if you can get over that, and that's, that's hard to do, but if you can get over that, you will experience joy in places and at a level you never have before. Playing catch in the backyard is, is unbelievable. Hearing birds in the mornings is one of the greatest joys I have. God gave us this moment, this time. I get to be with my family today. I get to I get to go to see my friends today. I get to experience all of these things today. And I know, having been through what we've been through, that there's gonna be joy in the things I do experience on that day. I never n noticed how beautiful sunsets and sunrises were. But now I notice that, and I don't know, well, it's God. Noah's laugh sounds just like his brothers did, which is hard sometimes, but it's also, I would have taken Noah's laugh for granted before. You hear a song on the radio, it reminds us of Blake, or you know, yeah, catch a glimpse of, especially Noah now, catch a glimpse of him, and it just looks so much like Blake, and it can make us cry, but at the same time, it's making us smile because yeah. yeah, I mean, still yeah. glimpses. It's so very, very dark sometimes. So very dark. And you can see that light, and God is the only explanation for that light. And then, you know, that's one day, and things are great, and then the very next day, you're back in that darkness, and it's, it's so hard sometimes. Yeah, it keeps pulling at you. You know, I remember in high school going through, you know, these are the, the buckets, the stages of grief. <laughs> They're not in order. No. They're not, you know, you're not once done you're done, them. yeah, once once you've reached that one, then you can, you know, just, if you're done and with it, it forever. Back. Because they come back. Sometimes yeah. they come back all at once. Um, some days they're way worse than, than they were. Um, you, can't, you can't ever get rid of the pain you right. felt. You can't ever get rid of that sadness. But, but you get so much more joy than you had before. It's like... The accident, anytime you experience that deep, just crushing pain, it's like your soul's pulled in a slingshot, just as, as far as it can be pulled down, and the further it's pulled down into darkness, when you make that decision to turn and go to the light, to turn and, and say, I can't do this, I gotta go to Jesus, he's you. And he sees that, it's like that slingshot is let go, and the deeper darkness you are in, it just, it shoots your soul that much higher.
know it all boils down to hope. And I know that um, someday I'm going to see Blake again. Um, if it weren't for Jesus, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't happen. But I know that I'm going to see him again someday. And my faith and hope carries me through that. If you know Jesus, there's that little bit of light that you can always cling to. Yeah, he doesn't go away. He doesn't go away. <laughs>